Hello, Rich Colvin here again. Recently, Tom Johansson came up with the idea of driving a Rosette's Revolution separately from the spindle. Ed French then dove into this idea and made the programming changes for the control system, and what has come about is what Tom has dubbed the Rosette Phaser Slash Multiplier. This video is about what that is and to show you how it works. The mechanical parts are fairly straightforward. We've added a second drive gear here, which is separate from the spindle drive gear back here, and this is the one that's going to drive the rosettes. Between the two is a needle bearing just to make it so that they don't uh, you know, connect to each other in terms of drive. There's also a second stepper motor uh, plate and, and everything here. Basically, we've duplicated all of the parts from down here, which drive the spindle, into a second set, which are going to drive the rosettes. All the same parts, the same drive belt, same drive gear for the stepper motor, same drive gear for what would have been the spindle, and uh, the same stepper motor behind that. So all of those pieces are the same, which is a nice feature because all we had to do was a fairly simple box here that's mounted to the top of the headstock to hold that in place. So let me show you what this looks like when it's in operation. This is with the rosette running at 50% of the speed of the spindle. And you can see that this gear is turning at half the speed of this one. It's kind of nice that it has the teeth on there to show that. I've moved over to the operator side of the machine to show you the controls. This is version 3.0 of the control system for multiple stepper motors. The user manual for this is at the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0 library. It's the big green book on the first shelf. Version 3.0 has quite a few changes from the old system, and Ed did a ton of work rewriting much of that code. By the way, he also chose to change the naming convention, so 3.0 is replacing the old version 26. And by the way, the user manuals for all of those prior versions are still available on the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0 library. They're just on the right side on the second shelf down below. The first change I want to point out is that there's no longer a B-axis, where we used to see Z, X, and B. Now we have Z, X, M3, and M4. And <clears throat> M3 is replacing B, except it's giving us some additional features. And one of those, just like with M4, is that we can go in here and we can set them to be either radial or linear. M4 is the same. In this case, I have mine configured to be linear. And the advantage to that is that this M3, which is this one here, is what we use in this rosette phaser multiplier to achieve the rosette multiplication that we talked about. And that's done here with this synchro. So when I synchronize M3, which is now red, and spindle, I'm doing that at 50%. So M3, which is driving the rosette, is running at half the speed of the spindle. I've attached a paper chuck and I'm using an F4 rosette to show you what this does for us as an artist. I have the system set up at 100% and let's see what it, get, what it looks like as if this were not installed in the first place. Okay, that's what we expected. So, uh, that's good. We wanted to have that at 100%. So let me swap out the paper and let's try this at 75%. Okay, here goes. So what you see here is three hearts that have been unfolded around a circle. And that makes sense because that's 75% of four. And we could do the same thing at 50% or 25% and get one heart, theoretically. I haven't tried that one though. But let's go the other direction. So let me swap the paper and let's try it at 150%. Change the speed. 
So now you see there are six hearts that have been unfolded around this rosette. It's just like I had an F6 rosette, which I don't make one. I don't know anybody that does, but this is the equivalent of having one. So that's a really neat feature. I'm going to try now taking an F1 rosette, and we're going to run that at 400%. So let's see how that compares to what an F4 rosette is. Well, as you can see, we do have four hearts that are unfolded around a circle, but, you know, quite frankly, that's nowhere near what the traditional F4 is like. But it might have something that, as an artist, you would want to use. And indeed, you could use amplitude adjustment and end up with something else that's very different than this. So, um, it, it's, it could be a great feature if that's something you wanted to use. So, next I'm going to talk about indexing, so give me a minute to set that up. One requested feature that was never solved on the MDF Rose Engine lathe was the ability to index an object relative to the rosette. And that's something that you would typically have done in the past with a worm screw like on a crossing wheel. And certainly, you know, we do have the phasing holes that are here at fixed intervals based on the rosette. In this case, it's an F1, so these are every 32nd of a lobe, or 32nd of a complete circle in this case. But sometimes artists want something different, maybe more, maybe less, it doesn't really matter what. But with version 3 we have this capability now. So what I can do is I can disable both of these motors and now I can turn the object by hand if I wish, or I could even turn the rosette by hand. And the other doesn't turn with it, so they are disengaged from each other. And that's nice. But I also have the ability, with the indexing function, to index them by degree. So let me zoom in on the rosette here. And what you're going to see is that I'm going to index the rosette, which is the gear on the left, relative to the spindle, and not turn the spindle. And we're going to do it two degrees. I can even go in and say I want at 0 0.275 degrees, which we may not even see it move. Yeah, there it did. So, those options are nice, and it gives us some features that we haven't had in the past. But now let's look at dynamic phasing, because this is, to me, one of the coolest features that we're giving you. In, in case I haven't said it, this is the really exciting feature for me. And what I can do now is to rotate a design from the rosette helically around the cylinder's face uh, up for a designated distance. On the GDP3 rosette, we had some capabilities to do that manually with a simulation, and that's where John McGill implemented these um, phasing holes every 1 30th of a lobe, and uh, John Moe had requested that so that he could do a, a split a finial that was rotating around rather than fixed. But what we can do now is do this in a more defined manner, and frankly, we can use any rosette. So, Ed implemented a new function called multi-sync. And I'm going to show you an example of where this is used. And we have a simple design that we're going to do across a two-inch length. And I'm going to stay with that F4 rosette, but I'm going to rotate it around the cylinder 90 degrees as we cut it across that two inches. And if I were making a real object, I would probably rotate it less, maybe 45 degrees or who knows, maybe 30. Because I think that would give it a more graceful turn. But for this demonstration, I wanted to ensure it is visible for you. 
I also had to rotate the cutting frame and that's why you're going to see it at an angle there. It's at 38.1 degrees so that the cutter is aligned with the helix. And I know that this can all be a little bit confusing. I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you. So there's an online calculator in the manual to help make this easier and uh, give you all the data that you need for that uh, multi-sync page. So I'm not going to make you sit through all the real-time activities here as they're a bit slow and it's going to be loud. Uh, so I will uh, quieten it down and I'm going to speed it up when I do the video that you see to help honor your uh, patience. So let me get it going. Well, my camera battery died, so I had to replace the battery, but it was good enough anyway for you to be able to see. So let me move my um, slide out of the way here. So that's uh, the feature that we were just looking at where we dynamically rotated the F4 rosette around. And I'm going to take the camera around and see if it doesn't jostle too much. That's a little bit better view of it, and you can see it rotating around there a little bit better. It's a, it's a super design, and um, even though it's, it's just a simple F4, when we rotate that around there, I think it's going to open up some really nice some opportunities. And You saw how easy it was for me to do this, because I didn't have to do a set of cuts all the way around, phase it, move it, set of cuts all the way around, phase it, move it, set, all, you know, set it and then forget to phase it and then start all over again because I messed up. So this um, automating a lot of those mundane tasks for us is going to make this a lot nicer. I, I want to note one other uh, point that was happening here that I hadn't mentioned before and that's the fact that I was running three stepper motors simultaneously and this is something that is now in version 3.0 actually we can run five stepper motors simultaneously uh, and that's what the M4 is all about, is that it's that fourth plus spindle stepper motor. And all of the instructions about this are in the um, MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0 library. And the great thing about this is this upgrade, the 3.0 upgrade, doesn't require any hardware changes, unless you want to get a, a fifth stepper motor. But you can run all four of those simultaneously by upgrading to version 3.0. And the instructions are there in that library that I had talked about earlier. So, uh, but if you do want to upgrade to the five motors, Ed has come up with a printed circuit board that does that. And you can order those from various places that we have denoted as well for you. If you want to build one of these rosette phaser multipliers that you can see here, the instructions for doing that are in the same library that I've mentioned before. On the bottom shelf, there's a book that's red titled jigs, fixtures, and add-ons, and you can get all the instructions there. As always, if you run into any issues or any questions, do just send me a note and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching, and I hope this has been worth your time. Bye-bye.